Hello, everyone. Welcome to week 42 of the It Doesn't Matter podcast. And we've got myself, Stratfax, John, and we have... The Dominican Dream. We've got Papi Platano. There he is. And we have... I am the notorious one. I am Dom. Boom. Still can't get it. <laughs> <laughs> one so. week before the end of the year. All right, so we're going to jump right into it. AEW Full Gear just took place live from the Kia Forum in beautiful, safe, relatively Los Angeles, California. And we have the lineup here, and Abel and myself were able to catch most of the show, but you know, I'll, I'll start off with, so what was the lineup? Dom, you got the lineup in front of you? Yeah. All right, I didn't see most of the show. I had an eventful day, so I did see little bits and pieces, but I did, you know, keep up. Got to, got to know the product. So, all right. So, we kicked off the show with the trios match. We're skipping the pre-show. Going to a trios <laughs> match. We have Luchasaurus, Nick Wayne, and your TNT champion, Christian Cage. And they went against Darby Allen, the rated R superstar, Adam Copeland, and Sting. Yeah, good old Stinger man. And then I seen this, and it must have been a dream come true for... I about to edge Adam Copeland to don the face paint. That would have been a shock. This man tag team with Hulk Hogan. He tag team <laughs> with Sting, and he also had Ric Flair in his corner. That has to be a dream right there yeah. for that man right there. Oof. Coming from where Adam Copeland was in attendance at WrestleMania Six at the Sky Dome, and you know we're not we're not the same age, but. Um, I grew up watching the same heroes, the same things, more or less. Yep. And, man, that is just fantastic for him personally. Just like you said, Dom, all the things you just said, <laughs> and I'm going to say them again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he had a feud with Ric Flair. He tagged. He won the championship with Hulk Hogan. Yep. And he's in a tag team match with Sting right there. And what's funny is that, you know, they, Sting has had matches with uh, Brian Cage. And Brian Cage, you know, kind of looks like the old... Um, uh, the Blade Runner Sting, you yeah, know, he kind of looks like, like I like that look. You know, it's like, dude, what are you doing? But it's like, come on, man, you know, he loves Sting. <laughs> Everybody loves yeah, Sting. Everybody Everybody loves Sting. Sting. And you know, I, I mean, back at WrestleMania 31, uh, I got a, <laughs> I got accused of being of being a huge Sting mark. And it's like, no, oh, yeah, I love Sting. I love all, a lot of pro wrestlers, you know. And why am I a Sting mark? Because I look, you know, Sting's great. And you know, I, I didn't take that as offense. I just thought it was kind of funny. You're gonna. Of all people, are gonna put Sting on, on me, um, but yeah, what really sold me on him because um, he's been in the discussions for I think probably the Observer Hall of Fame for many years, and people don't want to put him in. He's like, and you look back at him like Sting. Um, Sting's not in the Observer Hall of I, Fame yet. He might. I'm not sure. I don't. I don't pay too close attention to that. Yeah. But um, <laughs> Dave, <laughs> the, deal. The, the argument against him is kind of like you know. No, you know what? He's had a great career, and I had this. It's from High Spots. He had a Sting in Japan, and this was Sting around 1994, 95. Dude was a maniac. Yeah. Like, he did not wrestle. Like, lots of people to wrestle in Japan, like, they did not wrestle at home. Hulk Hogan being the most example. They like to do that on social media. Like, oh, look, Hulk Hogan's doing the uh, hammerlock in, in Zaguri. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, he could do more than just what he did in America, but that's not what sold in America, you know? Sting. But, but why would you need to do it if you're making... The yeah. money. Take that, MJF. Coming up soon. <laughs> and, uh, you know, so Sting was a crazy man in Japan. It's like, you know, his this body of work right here. You know, he he cared. He tried hard. He worked hard. Yeah, he was in some bad angles at the end of WCW, but that wasn't his fault. Being in TNA and whatever was going on there, that wasn't his fault, you know. he Minus he, the main event mafia. I did like that. <laughs> yeah, Joker Sting. Various Sting incarnations of Sting. Hi. Sting was the man. Yeah. So anyway, uh, in this uh, six person tag team match um and uh, darby allen's last for a while as he's going to start training to climb mount everest and hopefully live <laughs> the yeah. experience um that would be nice to see him come back after all that yeah um it was, it was a fun little match and um not and them coming out and uh, you know all together kind of like you know we'll see him punk did this too <laughs> our friend phil brooks he also did the face paint tag team match get up too, so everyone gets to join along with the stinger. Um, but it was a fun uh, opening match, and uh, and you know Darby Allen going off the rails at the end of the match, saying, 
you people need to get off your fucking asses. <laughs> he didn't say that. But he's just like, everybody, you know, get up and cheer for Sting. This is the last time he's going to wrestle in the Kia form. The, the, it wasn't, it's not the LA Coliseum. I forgot the old name of it. But you know, it's the last time he's going to wrestle here in Los Angeles. You know, get up off your butts and... Give Appreciate him. what you have, what yeah. you have in front of you. Yeah. So I'm and, surprised you ain't mentioned that choke slam Luchasaurus did to Darby, onto the ring apron. Ooh, good lord. That damn coffin drop. That's what you should call that shit. <laughs> Darby Allen, <laughs> you know, when he was in Evolve Wrestling, he I don't know if he got mad at the Booker or maybe it's just a story he was telling. Like Gabe Sapolsky, the Booker of Evolve and the Booker of Ring of Honor during its best period, 2006. Um, he wanted to hire Darby Allen because he was a big bump taker. And Dar- Darby was like, I'm more than that. And it's like, well, you still do it. <laughs> you still take those crazy-ass bumps. And he did. He's hurt, man. And, yeah, Luchasaurus gave him that weird choke slam in from the ring to the apron. Ooh. Good God, man. Oof. Jesus. Yeah. No, Darby Allen. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> you know, so... And you guys didn't mention Ric Flair taking a bump. <laughs> oh, God. Y'all, how y'all forget about that? So... Good, man. So Ric Flair is, you know, seconding uh, Sting um, to the ring to until, you know, his final matches. And, you know, he's out there. He's looking good. And he's in his purple attire. You know, he's got that Ric Flair drip. And, man, Christian goes face-to-face with him. Well, Ric Flair takes off his jacket. And he's ready to, like, you know, just knuckle up with Christian. And, like, they actually go at it. And Flair's, like, punching him, chopping him. Christian's like, ah! You know, and that Christian, man, this guy already has enough heat. He really gave yeah. it to Rick. Like, he gave him the little boy, pushed him. Poked him in the eye. Oh, my God. It's great. But here's the problem with that. Uh, Rick Flair just no-sold it, like, literally one minute later. <laughs> he just got back in the ring. You know, it's like, I get it. It's Legends Night kind of thing, you know. So he didn't sell it at all. But that was a really, like, oh, my God, going <laughs> over the line. And that wouldn't be the first time. AEW went over the line on this show tonight. Yeah. Um, but again, fun, fun, fun match. It was a good opening match. Yeah. That's how you kick off the pay-per-view. Mm-hmm. AEW full gear. All right, so our next match is for your AEW International Championship. We have the champion, Orange Cassidy, going against John Moxley. Oh, yeah. It was a good match. Another good match. Another good solid match. And yep. uh, Orange Cassidy... Getting, you know, in the storyline, um, he lost the title, and at first he didn't, he, he shrugged it off, he didn't care about it. You know, he's like, oh, whatever, like he like he does. Yep. And, but he really cared about that championship, and... He made that championship, yeah, basically. He, it, it actually... Per- <laughs> he made it. Yeah, yeah. He, he did made it. Yeah. Um, it made you look at Orange a different way, because yeah. some of us, like, I guess some of the, I don't know how you say it, the... Uh, Evolution, not the evolution. Yeah, the fair where the fans like that just mm-hmm. come in and like, who the hell is this guy? Why should I even care? And then when you watch him, his matches, it's like, this is why you want to watch this guy. Yes, his character may not be what you want, but the Orange. wrestling is a one. Orange was working in twenty twenty three. He did the damn thing. Yeah, he defended that title almost every single week, and I give him props. I, for I that. would probably say he's probably AEW's breakout star of this year. Because I wasn't expecting all that from him. Yeah, we've seen a couple matches here and there, but all those title defenses and and seeing the evolution of where he, he got to, where he's at. Orange, he went from here, now he's he's up there. Is he going to be in the main event one day? Maybe, maybe not. But with AEW, I mean, anything's possible. So it, just keep doing what you're doing and maybe something will come out of it because I really like what he's doing. So I wasn't expecting any blood in this match. I thought it was going to be a pure wrestling match. Mm. How the hell did Moxley get busted open? It's John Moxley. Just go. <laughs> 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 what happened? What, what did I miss? I forgot. I, I missed that too. Ditto. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like I said, there, there was a story to the match. Uh, Orange Cassidy's character has evolved over, over time in uh, AEW. So riddle me this. <laughs> How do you get John Moxley to bleed? You shattered one of those glasses, don't you dare. Um, no, no, no. I'm this, not sure. That's a treasure. It's a collector's item. I will have to replace that ASAP. The Batman Forever Cup. Um, Damn right. Comes with a small fry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, no. It's, it's a good, uh, good solid uh, all-around matchup. And, uh, yeah, there's some, uh, some, what do you call it, fortunate green. Some fortunate yes. blood there. 
and uh, still not the worst blood you'll see. But I, I honestly, here. I honestly thought um, Orange was going to drop the title back to Mox, but yeah, it and, would make sense because like you know Mox won it for a reason, unless yeah. this was the reason. You Mox know? don't need the title though. No, Mox he, he doesn't. I mean, after reading his book earlier this year, and you know, I'm just looking at Mox, and I'm just like, I'm a big. You just become a bigger fan of these guys if you read uh, their books or their true stories. Um, and if you care or do not care for uh, him in the ring or on the show, you can appreciate the man behind it. And even that being said, like uh, when he came back in WWE, uh, what, 2018 or something, after a serious injury, they had like a special on the Peacock. And I watched that special. It was like a look into him training, getting back into the ring, him with Renee out in Las Vegas yep. and stuff like that. And I was kind of like, I don't really like him. <laughs> <laughs> this is funny. It's like, I don't really like him. But reading his book, I was like, ah, oh, okay. I, I liked him better that way. That's how I felt about Lawrence Fole. <laughs> Lex Luger. Oh, He's one of the biggest legend stars in this business. That's how I felt about him. After reading his book, yeah, I like, I like the man, Lawrence. Still mock him, though. Oh. Hey. <laughs> there's gonna be some, there's gonna be some mocking later. <laughs> Starcade eighty seven. Oh, oh yeah, my goodness. All right, so your next match for the AEW Women's Championship, you got John's girl Hakura Shida going against Timeless Tony Storm, my baby, with Ooh. Luther the Butler. And then I seen this match. Oh man, Tony Storm is over, and yes. AEW did the right job of putting the title. Back on Tony Storm uh, for yes. the third time. I, it sucks for Sheeta because she's just a transitional champion. But I'll take it. Tony Storm, she's the hottest thing since sliced bread right now. And um, sliced bread is white. <laughs> <laughs> but Whatever. she is a kiwi. Yes. Mew. But my thing is, how didn't Aubrey notice the <laughs> steel plate frying pan, whatever she put in her butt? To Didn't take she, her out. Because her ass covered it all. Yeah, right? Come on, now. <laughs> Did you know Tampax came out with a new brand of... Uh, no, anyway. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, that was a glaring uh, omission yeah. from Aubrey, and sometimes that's, that's what happens. Yeah. But, yeah, it's too obvious that it fell, and she even... She did like the ray for my close-up thing, and then <laughs> she tried to... She, she was going to do her move. I don't know what happened. There was like some schmoz... Uh, fuck up bots right there. Yeah. So, she, so she went back to the corner and did the close up thing again, and then she tried to fix the thing. Uh, it's, it's too much, but um, it looked, hey. it looked like she wasn't ready for the hip attack. Yeah, yeah. She I mean, I'm always ready position. for it. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Tony Storm. <laughs> you, know, they, you, know, you know, they don't have an action figure of Tony Storm in AEW yet. Really? They have Jamie Hayter, which I don't have yet. They have uh, you know Britt and Jade Cargill and. That's going to be a collector's yeah, item. But there's no uh, uh, Tony Storm yet because they uh, don't have enough plastic for her ass. <laughs> it's too big. It won't fit in the box. Um, but whether this was a great match or not, it w- didn't have to be. It was a storyline based. They're trying to push this timeless Tony Storm character, which everyone loves right now. Yes. And it was the right call for the right guy. Uh, gal. Guy. Gal. <laughs> at the time. So we'll give it a thumbs up. I liked it. I like this whole thing. And I'll watch it again. Yeah. <laughs> it's yes. amazing how AEW when you first started, we were like, ah, we don't want those characters. We don't we just want straight wrestling. And sure enough, what brings you back to wrestling? Great character work. Stories. Stories too, but <laughs> you <laughs> great character work. Um, but yeah, when it comes to like wrestling, when the guys get older, if you can't wrestle you need to have a good character that's going to sustain and keep you going. Mm -hmm. So when Tony came in, it was just Tony Storm. Okay, no big deal, good wrestler, nothing serious. Now you got a character to go with it, timeless Tony Storm, which harkens back to like the old silent movie thing, something you don't see anybody doing. So it's like, (laughs) all right. I love it. Yeah, I love it so much. That's what you want. You want somebody to just like make you just like, hold up. What am I watching? All right, sit down. Got a character, boom! All right, let's go. It's good shit. What do you What do you think about What do you think about like? Okay, so allegedly she went crazy after she lost the title, right? Yep. She has the title back. Is she still gonna be crazy? Who? Right. She should. Yeah. Who she, did she to take the belt off? Was it Soraya? No, it was Tony. Was she? Uh, wasn't the originally. Fatal Four? Wasn't the Fatal Four Way? I think she don't want it from Tony Storm. It might have been. And then you know, then they separated from the outcasts, the social outcasts. Or whatever their name is. 
<laughs> B team, B team, go, go, go. Um, and then, you know, Sheeta lost it to uh, uh, Soraya at All In and then yep, lost yep. it back to Sheeta on something. <laughs> and Tony Storm uh, again. So, and apparently, you know, they did a whole year history. Like, oh, she won it. Tony Storm won it from Jamie Hayter last, you know, last full gear. It's like, jeez, yeah. that was a long ass time ago. Long ass time ago. <laughs> um, Hater's been gone for a little bit too. She's still on on that injury. Was it her knee again? I'm not sure what happened. She just you know, she did show up. She was able to get in the ring and do a, a spot or two to lose the title. Um, but that was short. What, yeah, what show was Because she was hurt. I forgot yeah, what show. She was hurt. I mean, double or nothing. I yeah. yeah. Sad. Damn. Hater's going to hate. Nah, but she's she's another one. I hope when she gets back, she comes back stronger and maybe find a better character than just Jamie Hater. I don't know what it can be. I mean, it's t- it's difficult. There's only so many characters, but yeah. you just don't want to lose somebody like that. So. Next. All right. Our next match is for the AEW Tag Team titles. It is a ladder match. You have FTR. You have the Tag Team Champions of Big Bill and Absolute Ricky Starks. You had LFI, uh, Dralistico, and Roosh. And you have the Kings of the Black Throne when they start being called think kings of the black throne i think they were uh, that was their team that was a like pre- an indie why don't they just say um house, house of black, black. they did they, they just... represent house of black oh, four Jesus. of them that's yeah. all right well you got malachi black and brody king i was just curious i'm like damn all right you're gonna be yeah. like, you know doom road warriors okay well they were a tag team in the indies prior to being called house of black when they had julia and um what is it julian murphy so that's when they formed House of Black, and then that's a long ass tag team name. It's like having well, the, having the New Age Outlaws within Degeneration X. Yeah, so basically, <laughs> <laughs> let's put it into terms we can understand. Yeah, the Kings Which, of the Black Throne. You, right now. Using you know, you guys know that, that cell phone game Heads Up. Yep. Yeah. No. 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 Uh, it's just a cell phone game, and like I say, we're me and you are playing it because you're in New York City and I'm in New London, Connecticut. <laughs> Via satellite. <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so it's, it's just something to kill time, right? So I have the. You're, you're gonna answer questions. I'm gonna hold up the phone right to my forehead or something like that. Okay. And it says like uh, Tony Storm, and you're trying to get me to say Tony Storm. Tony Storm, yeah. giving me clues. Yeah. Basically like charades. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And so I was playing it with the notorious, the other notorious one, Mitch Silver, um, <clears throat> and. We're we're like cheating because we're using wrestling terms. It's like <laughs> so like, you do it. it was like name like uh, s- something in Mexico. I'm like uh, Del Rio, Del Rio, <laughs> <laughs> El Patron. <laughs> she, and our friends are like, "What the hell are you guys talking about?" It's, it's our language. <laughs> uh, name three things in Mexico. All right, he's thinking uh, Del Rio, uh, Calisto, uh, <laughs> Penta. <laughs> It's like, this is so dumb. It's so cheating. It's like, if they said you can't use dressing terms, we'd lose. Oh, we would man. die right there. But, anyway, what we're talking about. Right, the tag team ladder match. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, Break it down. The kings of the Black Throne or something, right? Yes. Yeah, uh, no, it's a, it's a very... <laughs> you hear this a lot. It's a very good match. And... You know, uh, Ricky Starks and uh, Big Bill were just a thrown, literally a thrown together tag team. The uh, Big Bill mentioned it on commentary on Collision that I don't even know this guy. <laughs> 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 and see, but that proves how good we are. I don't even have to know him. And like, we're the tag team champions. And like, okay. And um, when they came out, I'm like, why are they? I mean, I know why, but it's like they broke up Hobbs and Starks just to do Hobbs and Starks. You know, just to have another big guy. Granted, I'd put more. Uh, faith in powerhouse Hobbs and I would Big Bill yeah. over time, but eh, it works. It's the old Sean Diesel thing, you know. That's what I was thinking. Yeah. And it works. You know, Ricky Starks, he can pull it off, and Big Bill's a good, you know, he's good again. You know, he had a bad couple of years, and uh, but a lot of hot action in there. Um, with in speaking of other untapped potentials, like Malachi Black, man, who he was so hot coming in to the company, and it's like, do something with this guy. Why are you yeah. sticking him in that tag team division? Come on, man. Um, he's good. He didn't even use Buddy Matthews that much. And uh, what's his name? Brody King's been hurt. Um, yeah. and Penta and uh, the other dude. <laughs> oh, Ray Phoenix? Uh, no, he's, he's hurt. Uh, he, uh, I want to say Serpentico, but it's not Serpentico. It's like Who, some... Roosh? No, no, no. Uh, Penta's uh, partner. 
Oh, uh, Dralistico. Dra- 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 dragon? I don't know. It's like, yeah, basically. Yeah. And then uh, Roosh and uh, Ten. I think that's who he was. Yeah. Preston, Preston Vance. Vance. Okay. I mean, Roosh is really cool, you know. Yes. But, Andrade's uh, brother. What? Yes. <laughs> Andrade's brother. <laughs> is he? Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't know that. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I can see it. Yeah. Idolo. <laughs> <laughs> <Eat a little. laughs> Andrade Idolo. Idolo, according to Kevin Kelly. Um, the idol. But yeah, anyway, the uh, the ending of the match, you know, uh, Big Bill and uh, uh, Ricky Starks, they retained the championships and they didn't do it in a fluky way. No, they yeah. won it clean. They won it clean. I was like, you know what? Big props to that. They could have totally had a, a scuzzy finish, but they had it clean. And it's like, all right, maybe they're going to put some steam behind this tag team and we'll see where they go. So Maybe till New Year's Revolution. That's WWE. <laughs> <laughs> Just revolution. Same brother. Shit. I say New Year's because it's coming up. Mm. All right, our next match is for the TBS Championship. You have the champion Chris oh, Statlander yeah. going against Julia Hart and Sky Blue. It looked like Sky Blue went to the dark side. Get in there. Oh, I'd like to see her dark side. Um, you could have. Oh, the moon. At Bobby's Burgers, Mohegan Sun. <laughs> <laughs> you can't. You know, <laughs> I love I love all the AEW women. You know. Um, Take that NXT. Hey, they got some. They got some there too in WWE, of course. But it's like, no, I love my AEW women wrestlers, in particular Sky Blue and Julia Hart in the same match with Chris Statlander. <laughs> <laughs> She's not doing that gimmick. She should. She ain't doing it for me. <laughs> um, but you know, Sky Blue came out with you know the the double black bloody eye gimmick thing. Like, yeah. it's like okay, Willow Nightingale got over it. You got to get over it too. So arguably, you could have had uh, Sky Blue or. <laughs> you get over that. Yep. I pushed the wrong bell. There's a bell with a slash through it. And there's a bell with no slash through it. Oh lord. Um, um... John owes everybody a beer. Yes, he does. You got it. Yes, he does. drinking more of this coquito. Yes, one of the best holiday drinks to have. On this Thanksgiving edition of the yeah, Meta Podcast. Days, days ago, Thanksgiving was. Yes. So good. Uh, <laughs> all right, back to Julia Hart and uh, okay. the black eyes. So, so you know, Sky Blue has the black eyes. eyes. <laughs> and, uh, yep. <laughs> and Sky Blue looking great, but, you know, they're putting some steam behind her, too. Yep. And uh, Julia Hart, you know, she had a lot of a push behind her all year long, but she did lose a Statlander, like, a... Last time, last month or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, so you didn't know who's going to win the belt. And in the end, Julia Hart won the title. And, you know, there's some good uh, uh, near falls in this match, uh, especially with Sky Blue. Her finisher is the uh, Sky. Cold, the Cold Blue. Cold, the cold, cold Blue, red. yeah. Oh, they changed her music, too. <laughs> yeah. They gave her new music. And it's like, great, you don't have the generic music anymore. But it's like, I kind of liked it. Um, so they, that's a sign of a push. They give you brand new music, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but Julia Hart, she uh, pulled out the victory, and man, the the crowd went wild. It did. And they love that because they they're curious about Julia Hart, and she won it. She should have won it because she's more over than Chris Statlander is right now, or ever will be. And oh, I just loved it. It was great. Yeah, she's shown a little bit of improvement since she first started compared to when we first seen her. I mean, she's still fairly green. She's only what twenty two, twenty three years old, and married. Yeah, married. I think to does does marriage give you life experience? Because a little bit. I mean, if your <laughs> if your husband's a decent wrestler, he can give you <laughs> some pointers. That's a different podcast. Well, obviously, she's better than him. Uh, you will see him on TV. It's called, uh, the, it's called the Angrily Single Podcast. I'm not though. Right now, <laughs> right now. <laughs> All right. But you know, yeah, big props to her. I'm, I'm glad to see they pushing like the young talent like they have been and. No. Hopefully, hopefully she she keeps doing what her, she's doing and keeps improving and getting better. It's not like they have Medusa coming in and beating everybody left and right and saying, I'm the champion now. Thank God. You know, they have and this is young. You want your young talent? You put them over on TV? It's happening right in front of your eyes yep. right now. So don't start complaining. Oh, are they pushing them? Hey, shut up. This is what you wanted. You want, you want the weird, funky other stuff? Check out Impact Wrestling. While you still can before they go back to TNA Wrestling. 
before they put Sonny Kiss back in the ladies' division, knockouts division. Did you see that match? I have it, but I have not. <laughs> you seen the clips? I, I've been quite busy. <laughs> Haven't been able to watch all the shows lately because been when we've been f- filming a lot of it doesn't matter podcasts of late. <laughs> um, but uh, no, I have it, and I do intend to check it out. So. All right. So Tony Khan's big signing. Oh uh, yeah. I told Abel. Yeah, you did. Will Ospreay. How was, the, how was the crowd reaction to that? It was actually really good. Yeah? Very good. Even though you were at Wrestle in AEW, like, five matches? He still was signed to... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I- it was still signed to New Japan, so they didn't know if he was going to be officially a part of AEW's roster. I, I, I said this in a in a pre-show conversation with uh, Abel last episode, before Dom showed up, actually. Oh, look at that. I said... Uh, Dom? Yeah, hit me. So I said about this signing, right? This uh, Will Ospreay signing. I said, here's what's going to happen. All right. <clears throat> if it's Will Ospreay. If Will Ospreay is the big surprise and he signs with AEW, the WWE fans will say, man, this guy had, did not have the balls yep. to go to WWE. Yeah. He, could, he would not be able to hack it. He stayed in the safe zone of the indie the AEW, the New Japan. He stayed where he was, where he's most successful, because he's not going to be able to make it to the big time. All right, That's one way of thought. The other way of thought is, he signs with WWE. Oh my God! What a signing! This guy's going to be the next AJ <laughs> Styles. Yep. There you go. Literally. One of the two ways. Literally. And it's one from of the, the two ways. And it's the same, it'll be from the same fan saying the same <laughs> shit. You either love him or you hate him. Yep. Apparent. Lee. Well, bruv, I love what he got. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Love you, bruv. Bruv, bruv, bruv. Um no, you're, hey, hey, great signing for him, and I'm yes. sure he thought about it over uh just like uh Walter, the longest ring intercontinental champion of all time. Yeah, I um, think um Will Ospreay explained why he, he yeah. chose AEW because it'd be a little bit of a lighter schedule. He'd have oh. time with his wife and, and he his didn't, kids. He didn't have to move to the States. Yeah. You know, he could stay where he is in England or, yeah, you know, live, he could stay in Britain so he doesn't have to take his kid out of school or what have you or something like that. So he his life, personal schedule, fits very well with AEW versus what it would be with WWE. It's like, hey, it's my kid's, you know, first no. recital. Oh, wait, I got to go to Crown Jewel? <laughs> you know, it's like, <laughs> God damn it, Vince. Or Triple H, you know. Um, so, just, there's one thing though. I just hope he doesn't fall into the whole pack situation where he's constantly having mm-hmm. issues with his work visa. That's it's like that's because he's a bastard. <laughs> it's true. Uh-huh. I, I I love Pack. Every time I see him, and it's like you don't get enough of him because he's it's always like his schedule's all fucked up, or, and it's like eh, he's got some issues. Like I, I, I feel like they're just gonna say fuck it. We're not gonna resign. All right, have fun, I mean, brother. Hey, he, I mean, whatever the problem with the visa was, the WWE had no problem. Exactly. Well, yeah. Neville. <laughs> Neville. Uh, I remember back in, you know, following the independent wrestling scene and uh, the company Dragon Gate USA. Their big pitch was they would have the Dragon Gate wrestlers from Japan mixed with American wrestlers in one promotion called Dragon Gate USA. And so many shows, visa problems, they couldn't get in the country. So it's like, who's on the show? Johnny Gargano, Aaron Fox, Chuck Taylor, Tommaso Ciampa, those kind of, those guys, they had to take over the show, and maybe they could fit in one of the Japanese guys that just happened to have a visa here, you know. Um, so that was a big deal. Visas are our things. Yeah. And uh, should use the Mastercard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know. Uh, yeah, it's it's not as easy to obtain them than they used to be back <laughs> in the day. Thanks whoever's in charge at that time. Um, but anyway, for the signing of Will Ospreay to AEW, you know, I mean, he, first of all, he he was or is a heel, and, and he uses that heel United Empire music, but that music he currently has, really like it. So Baby I'm glad six. they use it. It's a big crowd pleaser, you know, so uh, it was fun to hear that pop the crowd in Los Angeles. And, of course, he comes out, and he's very passionate, and you could see it. In him, that yeah. you know, he's he's really into this, and that's cool. It's a great signing for AEW, and uh, let's see where he goes. Although in the back of my head, they have plenty of wrestlers on the roster: the Malachi Black, Keith Lee, Swerve. You know, they have all these guys, and so like, here's another great guy. It's like that's cool. They have they already have lots of great guys. Yeah. What are you gonna do with them? They have Roosh. You know. 
and you hear me say this all the time. You do. I'm happy for the dude, but let's not get him lost in the sauce. Like, come on now. Switchblade. Well, exactly. Like I, I, I told you this the other day. <laughs> I was naming off Russell just like you just naming right now. They have too much talent right there. So what are you going to do? They do. They're just going to keep bringing all these top talents, and you're going to have your guys that's been there since day one fading out the company. Contract's going to be expiring. Take that, Butcher and the Blade. <laughs> yeah. There you go. I don't think Butcher or Blade is going to be world champion any day soon. <laughs> Hopefully so. they don't uh, lose Daniel Garcia. No. They're, man. Maybe. He's got time. He's still fairly young. I don't see him leaving anytime soon. There's a lot of dancing in AEW, too. And that's okay. Um, but, right. bruv, 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 what's the next match, bro? Our next match is a Texas death match. Holy with- smokes. I swear when I drive. Oh, I was singing that shit in Aldi today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shane Swerve Strickland going against Hangman Adam Page. You and forgot. Me. Hey, Shane Swerve Strickland with Prince Nana. Yes. Can't forget Nana. He's in the money. Oh, my God. Like I said, I'm mad I missed this match. <laughs> oh. Ooh. This shit was ooh. gruesome for what I've seen, though. From all the highlights I've seen, Hangman, you're a sick fuck. For laying on the ground and drinking um, Swerve's blood and spitting that shit out like Triple H. Oof. That's fucking disgusting. That's not hardcore. That's sick. You know who's not That's a racist? Terrible. <laughs> Hangman Adam Page. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for real. And then the staple gun to the, no. the, the kid's uh, art painting on his face and all that stuff like that. Well, that that made sense. Oh, yeah, I get it. I like that one. I like it a this lot. This is gruesome. This it was a, a wild match. From and what then, you've seen, how, was it too much for you? Do you do you think that if you watched it, you'd have been like, ah, I just can't. I it's can't. a match. Well, if I see it, I'll watch it one time, but I wouldn't want to watch it again. This is actually a match you would actually want to see again. Even with all the brutality, from me, my personal opinion. I was never really a hardcore guy like that. Oh, I was. Nah, maybe a couple of chair <laughs> shots here and there, but nah. like Not to this extent, but just... It, the story that it had behind it, it made sense why they had to go to Texas Deathmatch because of all the, the the shit that Swerve was fucking with him, going into your family and uh, your, your, your family's house and just, like, going over your kids' cribs. Like, yo, <laughs> don't be doing that because we're going to be fighting. So you want to see the visual of him choking his ass out with that chain with the uh, the rope? John Moxley right. already been, been, they did that plenty of times. It works. It's it works. effective. Hey, still, just that that image. Nah. Yeah, the 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 blood, the drinking of the blood, I I could do without, but I mean, <laughs> it's not gonna be something you're gonna see a bunch of guys doing every time they do a, a, a death match because it's that's a spot you don't replicate. You that's special that stays right there with them too. Fucking it, Swerve was already for me a made guy, but it made him an even better made, made man. Oh he, yeah. If, he, if he's not top five right now in that ranking to go against MJF, there's a big issue for me. Does that ranking even exist? Well, he, he beat Adam Page twice, so yeah. it should shoot him right up there. Where's Adam Page? Six? <laughs> um, it, it was an extremely brutal match. It's the most gruesome match I can have, probably have ever seen. Um, the last most gruesome match I've ever seen was in Lucha Underground with Killshot versus Dante Fox. Um, where, I mean, it was, it was post-produced, you know, and it was also filmed in Los Angeles. <laughs> but they were like, in that match, there's a piece of Dante Fox's skin on the mat. Oh, <laughs> Someone geez. bit it off. <laughs> oh, and the Lucha Underground could get away with it because they had a lot of fantasy elements to it at, at some point. Yeah. Um, but this match right here, I mean, yeah, it's not my cup of blood either, but... It, I did appreciate all the hard work going into it and all the creative uh, new spots. I mean, obviously, we're going to talk about uh, Hangman drinking his blood for a very long time. Yeah. It was the most memorable thing on there. <laughs> uh, I mean, lots of stuff happened during that match. And But, hey, check it out, though. Uh, in the beginning of the match, Swerve came out with his usual entrance, and he had uh, uh, Nana... Nana Grab the mic. Whose house? Swerve's house. And sometimes I feel like that's piped in, but it's like, nah. No, nah, that's a great reception. Yeah. And and he's supposed to be the heel. That's a crazy <laughs> thing. I mean, I've been behind uh, Swerve Strickland uh, for a, little, a while now because I yeah. he, he did not impress me at first, but he, over time he's really gotten there. 
and and that's great. But you know, uh, after he did his entrance, Hangman didn't wait for it. He came rushing out just yes. like he should have. Like, yeah, you broke into my house, and he went right at it. So uh, he must have been listening to our show uh, <laughs> last week. <laughs> and yeah, he was going right at it. So that aggression that was right off, right off the bat, before the bell rung, you know. Um, but it was an incredible match. Not everyone, not, again, not everyone's cup of tea, but I found a lot of value in it, yeah. and I, I like it. I'll I definitely like check it, it out. But yeah, like I, said, I could do a whole without the whole death match and all that stuff. I don't do nothing. Let, let's just say Swerve became an, an even better main man. That's all after that. Is. Let's hope so. Yeah, what's, and let's what's next say, for Adam Page? <laughs> He's a get a blood test. <laughs> yeah, I mean Swerve was fine. He was at the Rams game. <laughs> Literally the next day. Hey, he's the champion. Well, they said, whose house? And they show a picture of Spurs. Ooh. <laughs> Hangman's house. Oh. Not anymore. <laughs> to follow up this bloodbath was a tag team match, player. This had to be your buffer match. It was the Golden Jets, which is Chris Jericho and Kenny Omega, going against the Bucks of Youth. Yes. Matt and Nick Jackson. John, how was this match? Well, but hold on, hold on. Before you uh, get into it, if the Jets lose the match, they have to break up. But whoever wins, they get a tag team title opportunity. But what about the Washington State football team? Do they have a name yet? Anyway. Yeah, yeah, the Commanders. commanders. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So to f- you know, you're gonna follow up that bloodbath with a match, and you would do well to choose someone. Of this caliber, the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega and Chris Jericho. Um, that being said, the crowd was tired, and yeah, how are you gonna go from all that nonsense craziness to just wrestling? Like I said, if anyone could pull it off, it would be these four guys. And you know, they had a good match. They had they wrestled well, but they just wasn't doing it. Just wasn't doing it for me. You think and- the other match overshadowed this match? Oh, that was the match. That uh, stole the show. They should have did that match. <laughs> Hangman and uh, Swerve, main event, don't you think? No. I mean, you heard you know, Chris Jericho took it as a challenge. He's like, you know what? Let me try. I can do this. And yeah. I'll give him all the credit for that. You know, He really you know, took the effort to do it and attempt it. Um, but for me, it was just it was a good match. It, you know, you expect the, the most from guys yeah. like Kenny Omega and the Bucks, but it was just okay. And... Um, I think uh, it wasn't their fault though. Normally, nah, it wasn't, no. when you follow a, a pay per view match like that, it is so difficult to even say top this. Like, you can't. It's like, all right, bro, you, you got it. You, you got the the match of the night. Well, at least the, the show stealer. So we're gonna just do do what we gotta do. Play the hits a few times. Not even just play the hits. Just try to make it a little bit more exciting, and then boom. And then with the Bucks at the end of the sh- at the end of the match with their impression of. Uh, Chris Jericho when he's pissed off from a loss. <laughs> Can you tell me how the Jets formed? I know Don Callis was involved with both these the guys. Instigator. But uh how this match turn out with uh against the Young Bucks? Like how that play out? Uh it it, it has something to do like you said with Don, Don Callis. Are oh, you done? Right? They're just yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They got tired of him con- constantly interfering with them and uh just they had a team together, and then I guess they bumped into with the the Bucks one day, and they were like, "Oh, we're we can go against you, you know, and it's put like, your title. Put why don't you put your uh, what happened to the elite? Yeah, that yeah yeah what happened, yeah what happened with them? Yeah. So the feud with um, Don Kelly's family is done. No, with the- I, if anything, I think Don Callis is about to recruit the Bucks. Yes. <laughs> Yes. See what happens when you remove your common enemy, CM Punk, and you just have you just the, infighting. The enemy of my enemy is my friend. No. Um, but Riddle yeah, me this. Who <laughs> will be a part? I like that Riddler versus the modern Riddler in uh, that the Batman movie. Ugh, yes, <laughs> that gets a. That guy loves the rain. Um, <laughs> but the finish of this match, you know, Kenny Omega nailed the. Um, there's some shenanigans at the end, but Kenny Omega nailed the one-winged angel on, uh, I think, Matt Jackson. And I believe so. The the Young Bucks threw a hissy fit like you wouldn't believe at ringside, and it's kind of, it seemed out of character for me. I mean, I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to continue the storyline and advance it, but it's like... Like I said earlier, they were just imitating uh, Jericho after a loss. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Because <laughs> you notice that I'm like, 
Uh, when Chris would get mad, he's like, God damn it. Take the chair. But throwing the fucking uh, sneakers, I was like, that's new. You guys never do that. Oh, yeah. Threw it in the crowd? Yeah. So, I mean, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. It is a possibility they're joining Don Calais' family. Uh, yeah. He's a jackal. Yes, yes he is. <laughs> All, right. All right. In your main event, Ow. you have Switchblade Jay White. Going Boy. against the injured MJF Maxwell Jacob Friedman. A show long storyline where MJF was injured during the pre show we skipped. <laughs> 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 and uh, apparently unable to make it. So throughout the show, they were like, you know, they were going to hand the title over to Switchblade Jay White. Yep. And then Adam Cole came Baby. out. So you have a guy on one leg replacing another guy who also has one leg. All right. Tit for tat. And so Adam Cole came out. He was about to go one on one with the Switchblade one. And then uh, the, <laughs> the, the, the Wambulance sirens came out. And MJF comes back to the ring. And they have a, you know, they have a, they have a, they have a match. They have a pretty long match. And uh, MJF dislocated his hip during <laughs> the ridiculous. Why would you do it? Uh, I guess a table that cutter. Broke. The cutter was one of them, but another one was uh, he did the elbow drop on the top rope to the floor. Yes. Good God, man! Yeah, when I first saw that, I what I didn't remember that. It was very memorable. I was like, oh, maybe he, you know, he landed on his uh, his foot and his his thigh first. Nope. Yeah, it just busted his hip out. Yeah, that was. Oof. Oh my God. And uh, I don't recommend doing that, but man, big props to MGF good. for that. Um. But they, I mean, it was a quality main event. But all I can think about was, man, it was overbooked, big time. Overbooked. You have this and that and this and that, and it was it was unnecessary. I tell you what, you know, they haven't done this before. You know, it's not like they do this all the time. So it's kind of like, hey, with it one time they did a false, uh, we call it a false stretcher job. Yeah, like a stretcher job, a false advertising kind of deal, bait and switch. That's uh, what I was going for, bait and switch. And it's kind of like, was that really necessary? They couldn't have just had a straight-on match. And you know what? If they had a straight-on match, people would probably think this was one of the less exciting main event matches because it's like MJF and Switchblade. What the hell? So put some juice on it. They put Adam Cole in the mix, did all that shenanigans. And uh, like I said, they had a hell of a match. And MJF pulled it out in the end and retained the championship. Now he has to go on and maybe face Switchblade again. Go on to Samoa Joe. He's got Wardlow in the wings. And, of course, under those wings is Swerve Strickland. So lots of things coming up for Maxwell Jacob Friedman. And the bidding war of 2024. <laughs> Supposedly he uh, re-signed. Supposedly. Quietly. Until 2027. Until I see that contract. You'll never, I don't believe it. You'll never it see it doesn't contract. matter <laughs> what they say. You'll never see that contract. I know I won't. God damn it. <laughs> Because we don't need to see that backstage stuff. It's none of our business. It's not. No. It really isn't. No. It's fans. All right. So there you go. AEW Full Gear. That's right. Never mind what the graphic says. <laughs> <laughs> so that's AEW Full Gear. It was a wild show. Uh, always a good time. And, uh, you know, I, I, I watched it in segments. I did not watch it all at once. Because if you watch it all at once, you're a sadist. So, you know, watch it on delay, ignore everyone you know, and uh, watch it at your own pace is what I recommend. But let's get on to our main topic of the evening, which is... NWA, Starcade 1987, Chi-Town Heat, taking place in Chicago, Illinois. I would hope so. It better. (laughs) This this, this pay-per-view was voted upon by... The Dominican Dream. The Dominican Apple Chippian Dream himself. And you know what? It was a good pick. I it spit a real in the face for people who don't want to listen to this podcast. It was right. a real good show. The whole show went really by so quickly. Question. Take some raisins home with you. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So your first match, you have Eddie Gilbert, Rick Steiner, and Larry Zbysko with Baby Doll going against the Fabulous Free Birds of Michael P.S. Hayes, Gorgeous Jimmy Garvin, and Sting with Precious. Now, the Freebirds were babyface at the time? Uh, yeah, they were wow. over. Wow. Because I, I, if, I, if I recall, they were, they were heels they back were heels in the day. They were for the longest time, but yeah, they were over. And the only thing, I didn't like how everybody was already in the ring besides the Freebirds. And once their music went off, they, the place just Bad went nuts. Bad Street. I think that's what it is. Yeah, Bad Street, Atlanta, GA. <laughs> 
Yeah, but the Freebirds came out to a big pop, and it wasn't piped in because I went on YouTube as well and looked up the footage, and it was, yo, it was live, it yo. was live. But uh, for opening match, <laughs> it was a dope match. Eddie Gilbert with the Hot white, stuff. the white uh, <laughs> Statue of Liberty glasses on. I was cracking up. Staying with the white and black face paint. And, you know, 10 years later at Starcade, he had the white and black face paints when against Hollywood Hulk Hogan, that, which we yeah. talk about. Sting is a perennial six-man tag opening match guy. That's crazy. Like yeah. full gear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I used to love wrestling like this. This is my cup of tea right here. Um, you have the dark background, and the light is just focusing on the ring. That's your spotlight. That's your attraction right there. I used to love that. And, and then, then you love that Ring of Honor footage. An honor club. <laughs> I do. <laughs> Production value sucks. Well, you are focus on the wrestling, ain't you? Yeah, but um, every well, single time the baby face got hot, the fans just got louder. It, it was dope. It was real dope. And I like the little little things that uh, Michael P.S. Hayes did. Like, he grabbed Larry Zabisco by the nose like some yeah. uh, like some uh, Three Stooges type shit. You yeah. start punching him. <laughs> you don't see that anymore. No. That, that's good shit right there. And did you guys see that bulldog that... Larry Zabisco oversold. Yeah. Yo. <laughs> How do you land like that? He land, he flipped over. He's the living legend. <laughs> yes. that's, what, that's what that yeah, means. Yeah. I, I flip over, brother. <laughs> <laughs> but the ending of the match, it went the time limit draw. Mm-hmm. I wasn't fond of that finish. <laughs> no but <one> is. <laughs> Commonplace for its time. Yeah. Let's hurt nobody's feelings. But it was a good opening match. Though. It was not the worst finish of the show. No, no, no. Not by a long shot. Nope. Abel, what do you think about that match? Uh, a lot of action, like you said, uh, a lot of good, good action. But the ending, I was just like, really? Yes. Come on. That's what it is. Is it? Can you guys? Is it during that time where like I'm not gonna lose him? I'm not gonna lose. I'm like, come on. He's got a dog face like a gremlin. He looked crazy. <laughs> Yo, that hairdo and the uh, Rick was a fucking beast. I'm like, yeah, jeez. Yep. Yeah, he doesn't shave his pubes either. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> a dog face gremlin. All right, hey yo, ooh, ooh, ooh. that's the noise it makes. <laughs> all right, so after this backstage, you see Missy Hyatt trying to promote the show, and your right. next match is for the UWF Championship, Mm-mm-mm. and the UWF is the Universal Wrestling Federation, and I had to look uh, look this up. Um... This is not the Herb Agr- Abrams UWF. So it's not fun then? No. This is actually the Universal Wrestling Federation, which uh, was Mid-South. Okay. Oh, this was uh, Bill Watts' territory. Yeah, then when uh, Crockett bought the company, he uh, changed it to, I don't know if you guys noticed the ring, the apron. It said T... T, yeah, T something. It wasn't NWA. Yeah, it was like some wrestling... Yeah. They, some, they, it, some was merger. The, it was in the credits. Yeah, it was like some merger. <laughs> So, your next match, you have Barry Windham going against the UWF champion, Dr. Death Steve Williams. And what do you guys think about that match? So, the the big spot of the match was, um, I think, Barry Windham going for a leapfrog, and, uh, or vice versa, Steve Williams nailed him in the nuts. No, Steve Williams tried to go for a leapfrog, right. and then because Barry was oh, too yeah, tall, yeah. just Barry. whoop. <laughs> like, sorry, brother. You okay? So stupid. So it was a friendly competition between two friends, and, and, and they not, try to test each other's strength yeah. and whatnot. But like they said, like what uh, Platino said, Doctor Death tried to jump over, and he just fell short. <laughs> and then he, got, he got hit in the nuts, and then Barry Windham trying to show him like good sportsmanship, like I'll let you, you know, recover, get up, do your thing, and. Uh, and then is, it, the table yeah, got when, turned around. Yeah, table got turned around. And Wyndham was, went for a splash and went tumbling over the top rope. And then as soon as Wyndham crawled back in, Doctor Death hit him with like a cradle for the pin. Yep. One, two, three, and I was like, Dr. "What? That's your champ? That's it?" Ugh. <laughs> I know. It's like, first of all, they the merger, yes, but you know, kind of like the WCW, the Alliance angle. There was one real winner here. And that was the mm-hmm. NWA. And they treated the UWF like nothing. And it was just an embarrassment. It was like an ECW on sci-fi match <laughs> on a WrestleMania, perhaps. 
Yeah, it was just disappointing. Like, you had Barry Windham. Like, he, this is Ric Flair's best version of the Four Horsemen is with Barry Windham. And yep. this is Barry Windham in the 80s. What the hell? You know, it's just a waste of a match. This was the worst finish of Starcade. We've been I seeing agree. a lot of Barry Windham lately. <laughs> all these shows. Oh, well, you see a lot. Of, we're seeing everybody. You know, we see all our old friends. You know, who you know who we haven't seen is the British Bulldog. They fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you just go through segments and is you actually see these parallels in wrestling, such as Sting being in an opening six man tag team match on a pay per view. You know, it's just wild. It you was know. hog wild. <laughs> All right, so our next match is the Midnight Express with Jim Cornette oh. and Big Bubba. If you guys don't know who Big Bubba is, that is the Big Boss Man. man. They went against the Rock and Roll Express in the Skywalker's match. A Skywalker's match is basically a scaffold, and you're fighting on the top, and you get to, torn to lose, you got to fall off, both your team, and then the other guy got to climb down. And I think it. they had more than one of these. They did. They had one with LOD. Okay, yeah, that, that was the one where Jim, Jim Cornette Cornet broke, broke his legs. Like, yeah. One of these who broke his <laughs> legs on. Um, and so I, you know, uh, walking into, walking, into the, st- watching this show, Stark 87 for the It Doesn't Matter podcast, um, I could say, you know, I've never seen this show, but I have, I was having flashbacks. I'm like, I, I think I have in some way. I've seen this match before. But maybe it was on the uh, you know the best of Starcade DVD. That's what probably I, I watched it back then, and because it looks really familiar. And I'll tell you what, man. I mean, we're gonna. There's more to this show, and and you'll hear it as we go along. But this was a, a dangerous lot of, match. It was a da- for, okay for, <laughs> yeah. for, for for realsies. Yes, a very dangerous match. It's a ridiculous match. You know, especially at work, we do rigging and and, and we're up in the air and doing all these things. It's like. Guys, let's watch this scaffold match. Yeah. You know, this is dangerous. I was going to ask you that before the, the podcast. But I was like, you know what? Let me save some of that for the pod because I'm yeah. just looking at them like, fuck you. I'm, no way. Your your knee's going to get blown out. Your ankle. God forbid you, you can't <laughs> you can't get thrown off right. You, you land wrong. No way. You're not going to get me. I hate heights. I think work safety I'm not doing, began in the 90s. <laughs> that's why I down low. Oh, let's go roller coaster riding. Fuck oh, you. Boy. I'm all set. Bye. A wooden, a wooden roller coaster at nah, that. Nope. The Thunderbolts. <laughs> no, oh, I'm not even touching great. that. Don't think so. <laughs> but yo, Stan Lane, he looked amazing right yes. here. I'm like, damn, what the fuck happened to Stan Lane? I didn't realize a few years later he was in the WWF E and he was an announcer backstage. Yes. I, really? Yeah. Wow. I remember him as an announcer, but I didn't put one and two together. Like, damn. Damn, that's no. <laughs> I never would have thought that. <laughs> yeah, he was on some doing some uh, Coliseum home video. Uh, yeah. Here's some tips for your WrestleMania the arcade game. They should give him tips about his hair. That shit was should, terrible back then. Should, yeah. Up, down, <laughs> left, right, <laughs> AB. It was all about that mullet back in the day, baby. No, this I I mean I had a lot of fun watching this match. I thought it was great. <laughs> it was better than I thought it was gonna be. Exactly. Sometimes. You're probably like, this is just stupid game match with a kennel in a cell or the Punjabi prison. No, no, no. <laughs> this guy whole match was pretty good. Actually, it was cool. I'm speaking. I'm speaking of a, a different scaffold match. Maybe we'll get to that someday. Starcade, two thousand. Did we do that? No. No. Okay. Good, because my memory's okay. It was like Shane Douglas and like Billy Kidman in a scaffold match. It was why it was awful. Why Tori Wilson? Yeah, for Tori Wilson's uh, left nipple. <laughs> Man, that match. You want then that? again, Ugh. all right. So I'd I'll, fight for it. Yeah. So then put me in that scaffold match. I like pepperoni. Mm. All right, so the winner of that match was the Rock and Roll Express. Yeah, and a nice moment at the end was like, I think they're still up there, the Rock and Rolls. And Big Bubba <laughs> Rogers <laughs> comes up. He, well, actually, uh, who was it? The uh, the brown haired guy. He was. Ricky Gibson. Yeah, Robert Gibson. Robert Gibson, Robert Gibson was yeah. down. Ricky Morton was up there. Yep. And like, here comes the big boss man, right? <laughs> and Ricky Morton is like, what's that? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> hit, him, hit him right in the ding ding. <laughs> he escaped. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was cracking up. I yeah, was Rick, cracking up. I, my fun story about Ricky Morton is this: this was, in, I believe, this was in New Orleans at the Russell Con Hotel, and a bunch of fans were piling into the elevator. You know, we're going up, down, wherever the hell we're going, and Ricky Morton is in there, and it's just, it's just quiet, you know. And Ricky Morton, he's no fool. Okay, he is no fool. He knows that he knows where he's at. He's at a, a hotel. He knows he's at WrestleCon. He knows he's full of marks all over the place. Maybe they'll admit to, hey, I'm a fan. No. Like, he breaks the silence. He's like, hey, y'all having a good time here at <laughs> WrestleMania? 
And he, we're like, yeah, you know, and just that little interaction right there. I was like, oh, this guy, this is a cool dude. Yeah. I like Ricky Morton, you know, just that little interaction. So all the wrestlers out there and all the world, it's like, you don't know who you're going to affect and what impression you're going to leave. So hopefully make it a good one. I met Robert Gibson in the urinal around <laughs> the Russell Costumer show last year. What's his eye looking at you? Like, <laughs> I'm just... I'm just trying to look straight. <laughs> but I, you know this he's a wrestler. You know who it is because you see the fucking mullet and you see the gonna, boots. And I was going to say something the trunks. keep it to myself. <laughs> do, you know that, do you know that story? Like they used to take the, the hotel bed sheets, sh- shred them, make headbands and sell them for like $10 a yep. pop. Wow. Yep. Oh, man. Anything, yeah, the rock and rolls, anytime they would get anything, they just slapped on the fucking rock and roll express <laughs> tag. That's All right, boom, here you go. And they would sell out every single piece you know of merch. I love this rock and roll express cookie time. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Ricky and Robert. <laughs> All right. So after this, we get the free birds getting interviewed backstage. And Jimmy Garvin, Jesus, that man was long winded. <laughs> he was long winded. And he wants to challenge the winners of the Road Wars and Tully and Arn Anderson. And he said his brother, who is really his stepfather, is going to beat Ric Flair, and Dusty Rhodes is going to win the title. Hold up, hold up, what? You heard me. That's a lot of names in a short amount of time. He said that shit, yeah. All right. Wait, so you know, Jimmy lo- Garvin is... Ronnie Garvin is a, Ricky uh, is Jimmy Garvin's actual, stepfather. Actual stepfather. Yeah. Oh. That's what Wikipedia said. Wow. I mean, the one thing I have to think about is that, you know, when they went to the WWE Hall of Fame, the Freebirds, where did all that hair go? For real, all of them. Oof. But here, he, uh, Jimmy Garvin was one of the uh, and what, baby doll. Is that? Yep, they're one of the, the the good stories of a couple in, in pro wrestling, and they've been married and they've stayed together since. <laughs> so there's a happy story out there. Good shit. Yeah, Took, I think he's like a, a pastor now, or something like that. Yeah, scared the hair off him. Yeah. <laughs> oh jeez. But yeah, he had a pretty long uh, promo, but he had good delivery. So there you go. Yep. All right, so we get another promo. We get Dr. Death backstage saying he's the wrestling machine of the world and that oh, he will go man. 210% to protect that title, and he respects Barry Wyndham. Speaking of, he long, can't talk. He can't talk for no. nothing. His promos are death. Mm-hmm. And he's a doctor. Um, but, yeah, bad promo from Steve Williams. What? Mm-hmm. Steve Williams. What? Steve Williams. What? Dr. Death. What? <laughs> Brawl for all loser. What? <laughs> Supposed to fight Stone Cold. The only action figure left on the pegs. Dr. Yeah. Dusty Williams. What? <laughs> all right. Our next match is for the unification title for the NWA unification and the UWF TV, TV title. title. Yes. Yep. You have Terry Taylor going with Eddie Gilbert going against Nikita Koloff. Yeah. Nikita. Terry Taylor, he looked good. He's like a good heel right here. But I don't yeah. know why. Just that one character fucked him his whole career up. <laughs> him being a Red Rooster in the WWFE. You could be a Red Rooster or Mr. Perfect, which allegedly never happened. Yeah. Ruined him. <laughs> Ruined him. Yeah, this, I'm, he, I'm, he, was, he was good right here. He yeah. was a good heel at this moment. Yeah. I'm trying to watch it. I'm trying to look. I'm trying to think in the future. I'm like, could this guy have, could have been more? I mean, the guy who's solid. Yep. You know, was he spectacular? I'm like, I don't know if I would say that. You He's know. a good hand. Yeah, but is he? Could he surpass Kurt Hennig? No, you know, because that's you know that that uh, we call it the fairy tale now, uh, old no, wives' no. tale, whatever it's called. That legend that he could have been Mister Perfect. It's kind of like no way the box of gimmicks. I honestly feel like Kurt Hennig was the per- the only guy to fit Mister Perfect. He really uh, was the perfect guy. Like his selling was perfect. His promos. Athleticism. I mean, he had it all. How are you at football? Perfect. I, How are you at billiards? Perfect. Yeah. Oh, I got a good gimmick for you then, pal. I, I love the story behind the whole whole the uh, vignettes where he. I feel like he did it on purpose, where he'd miss every shot or everything he did when he's on camera. When the but camera then, was off. Yeah, the, every, fucked yeah. up. But as soon as the camera's on, he was money. No, when the camera was off, it'd be money. But when the camera's on, he'd be off. What a gimmick. Eh. What a Whatever. West Texas redneck. Rap is crap. Anyways, I enjoyed the match, and I liked Eddie Gilbert getting involved, and they kept going back and forth. But um, Terry ran into hot stuff by mistake. Ivan Koloff, or Nikita Koloff Nikita. with a clothesline. One, two, three, he's new. 
unified TV champion. Hit him with the sickle. <laughs> yeah, the Russian sickle. Oh, my God. Yeah, it. like, Nikita Kolov, just a guy lost to history as well. It's like, yeah, yeah look at this guy. Look at this guy. He must have had, like, a back injury or something, but... And he had a promo later on. And, and he literally changed his name, Nikita Kolov. And he's not even Russian. <laughs> he's from Texas. Minnesota. Oh. The Minnesota boys. He's one of the Minnesota boys? Yeah, he's... Him, Hawk, Animal, perfect. Half live, half so, die. So it was was no. Ivan the one that and was Rick. from from Texas? Mm. Ivan Koloff, Koloff, I believe. I don't know. I'm not sure. One of but them. I don't know. This dude. That pro. <laughs> oh. yeah, yeah. But anyways, Good the action. next match is Arn Anderson and Tully Blanchard with J.J. Dillon going against the Road Warriors for Precious Paul Ellering. And man, yo, that you know, crowd I, was yes. lit. Yes, you know I was a fan of Tully Blanchard. Tully's my guy. A oh, yeah. true heel. This is 1987. Arn Anderson looked old as hell. He's only 29 <laughs> years old. <laughs> old Arn Anderson looked young as hell now because he's 60 and he still looks the same. So, <laughs> Road Warrior Hawk, Jack to the gills, like John would say. Yeesh. And honestly, guys, if his demons didn't get to him, I think he would have had the World Heavyweight title in WCW when Flair was in the WWFE. Yeah. I think you had this opportunity to. Hawk? Hawk. I think yeah. He went, while him and... Uh, Animal were split for that little time being. I think he had a he had that chance. Uh, yeah, I I guess from what they said backstage politics or whatever was going on, he wasn't where he want he needed to be. So they was like, nope, going back to tag teams for this guy. It was good run, but nah, we don't trust him enough. I, I really like that about the NWA and WCW at the time. Like they would just take the singles, the, the tag wrestlers, and put them in world title matches. Ricky Morton had title matches with Flair. This this continued until 1996 WCW. Why the hell would that version of Scott Steiner wrestle the giant for the WCW title? <laughs> Why? But they did it. It yeah. was cool, you know? And they would have... Actually, the, the, this was somewhere I found. Uh, it was, uh, Sting faced... Sting defended the WCW title against Mean Mark Callis. Wow. So that match actually did happen. It was. I know it was, the, it was for a title. Sting was a world, well, according to the thing, Sting was a world champion, and me and Mark Callis' last WCW match was with Stinger, and uh, wow. So we actually got the take, Taker versus yeah. Stinger. Yeah. yeah, I remember the match. You but... know Brock and Batista wrestled in OVW. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. we did see that. You know, sometimes it's funny, like the wrestler, like, you know, Roddy Piper or something would be on interviews. He's like, oh, I've wrestled Hogan and Warrior and this and that. It's like... Where? Where? <laughs> yeah. But they did wrestle. I mean, they yeah. probably could have on the house shows and stuff like that. Like, yeah, could, Roddy Piper totally could have wrestled the Come Ultimate on, Warrior. Pal. We don't talk about the house shows. We don't talk about TV. Well, it didn't happen somewhere. They don't mention it in your promo then, Roddy. God damn it, Roddy. You know, exactly. Can you Hogan. not mention it? Shit. Hogan and Brett. <laughs> and, uh, yeah. All right, back to this match. The Road Warriors, I would not want to mess with. Oh, they were en fuego. And then They're the Shane w- McMahon's favorite tag team. I think it was everybody's favorite yeah. tag team at yeah. that time, man. But still to this day, Arn and Tully they had the heel tendencies for this match, and like when um, who was it? I think Hawk threw Arn to the ropes. Arn stopped and rolled out the yeah. ring, and then he started running. And then he it was Animal. If I animal, Animal. Excuse yep. me. And then Animal started chasing him, and he got in the ring, and he tried to you know. Cut him off, which still didn't work. Nope. <laughs> we'll still fuck them up. But you don't see that no more, man. Like you don't see like the heels looking scared of like your mean top baby face like that. Everybody wants to be stone cold. Everybody wants to be a, a fucking badass. Why can't you why can't you be a chicken shit heel? Shit, I, I, I could do it easily. <laughs> <It's>, <laughs> two big guys like that? Nah. I'm I'm good. Nope, 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 nope. Like you know, you know who was on commentary was Tony Schiavone and good old JR. And JR kept calling him Road Warrior Hawk. No, I guess that's Animal. And so he kept messing that up. So I thought that was enough. <laughs> Animal, no Hawk. Hawk, Hawk, Hawk. <laughs> <laughs> and I also liked the, how Tully hit Hawk with, in, with the, the chair with the, uh, in his knee. Yeah. And then they start working on his knee. That's how you're supposed to and do it. And then Hawk struggling, trying to make the tag. And they cut him off. Like, you really don't see that anymore like that, man. Like, I miss shit like that. What the cutoff where somebody cuts off half the uh, half yeah. the ring? Yeah, you'd, yeah, you'd get that from an FTR match if it's a straight tag team, uh, two and two. But I, yeah, you're right. I don't really see too many tag teams cutting the ring off in half. It's it's very rare, and if you do, those guys are definitely veterans and they they know how to to work the the ring the way the way it's supposed to be done. In my opinion, that just as a tag team, someone who loves tag teams, that's 
like I said, FTR to to me, A1. And their favorite tag team wrestled earlier that night. Yep. Midnight. You know who doesn't do that kind of tag team work? Young Bucks. Austin Theory and Grayson Waller. (laughs) (laughs) They're a tag team now? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yep. Well, we called it. Wow. Austin Theory, They're would the... you pay a dollar? Oh, God. I cannot say I will. That guy sucks. All mm-hmm. right, so we had a little controversy with the finish. His music is cool. At the time, um, Arn got thrown over the top rope with a back body drop <laughs> and landed on the ramp, <laughs> and you get disqualified. <laughs> yeah, this is during the time where you can't throw somebody over the top rope. Uh, yeah, I'll be I'll be honest with you. Otherwise, I'll lie to you. You know, sometimes I'm not always paying attention to these matches as much as I should have. And, but I did notice. I'm like, why the hell is Earl Hebner counting the pin? Yeah. <laughs> like, he's not the ref. And exactly right, Tommy Young was the ref. And he, yeah, oh, I saw Arn Anderson go to the top rope. Man, the bullshit. You didn't see that happen. But that was the finish of the match. The dusty finish. I, I don't know if this was the dusty finish that killed the uh, Road Warriors in Chicago. Draw drawing wise, um, but yeah, it was a dusty finish of the highest magnitude, yeah. and they won the titles. They well, here's the thing. Here's the cool thing. They like they knew they didn't really win it because of the technicality, but they took the belts anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they you, took the belts with them. Yeah, they probably would have had a riot if they didn't walk out with those belts, especially being their hometown. Yeah, just just give it to them. Just but don't do it. Kind of like the earlier matches in the show, which is a hot, 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 hot match, crummy finish, but. Hot action, hot match, so yeah. yes, there you go. All right, so backstage, we see Nikita Koloff kind of promo. Da, 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 da. I'm a, I got the title. I, I, I respect Terry Tiller, and I got two titles. I'm a champion, blah, blah, blah. This title don't mean nothing. This is the real title right here. I'm going to drink a beer. Nikita Koloff. Ultimate Warrior took his style from him. That too. What a rush. <laughs> All right, our next match is a steel cage match for the United States title. You have Lex Luger with J.J. Dillon going against the American Dream, Dusty Rose. I had a little video pack that had a Dusty Rose, like like him just jiving and dancing and all that stuff like that. It was pretty cool. You know, baby, hey, you know how we do when we get in the ring. We're going to get you excited, especially when we hit you with that bionic belt, big old elbow. Ooh. Easy for him to say. Exactly. Too yeah. much muscles. Lex Luger. <laughs> Looking like a million bucks, and you've seen, and I think good old Jr. said, "Don't judge a book by its cover." <laughs> Look at that Dusty Rose, <laughs> Dusty Rose out there flexing. Like, yeah. Oh man, but I love how both of them weighed almost the same amount, <laughs> and yet they looked completely different. I was cracking up when Dusty had him in the in the sleeper. Yeah. They, ch- they called it a different name. Uh, that dude was outside. The Wheeler Lock. The Wheeler Lock. The Wheeler Lock. I was like, I'm like, I'm like it was Johnny Weaver. And yeah. Shit. And he's on Luger's back. And Luger just holding him like nothing. Like, Jesus, man. Does he look like he pushing 400 pounds right here? I don't know about he that. Would, he was in no 287. I'll tell you that. He's pushing on Cody's mother. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. But, yo, I fucking lost it. I had to rewind this. Give me so the insomnia. <laughs> Did y'all see? Oh, dream. Give me insomnia. <laughs> Did y'all see that elbow Luger tried to do? He jumped up so fucking high and oh, missed. Yo, yo, that was stiff. Yo, okay. <laughs> that, was, that hurt. <laughs> that must have been the style back then because Sting did it. Yep. And, and Luger did it. And they did, it was they did that animation in the video game. Yep, I remember like, what that. What kind of stupid elbow was that? Why, oh! why doesn't anyone do that today? Yeah, <laughs> Ziggler. Probably because it's stupid. Yeah, I was cracking up. Yeah, I was like, oh, man. Oh. Yeah, you got you got, oh my, you got oh some hype. Luger got up there for that, that elbow, man. They <laughs> talk about things. Bring bring that back, man. That's oh, funny my as hell. Goodness, man. Luger's overselling like the little things. Like, you know, Cody be watching, so he'll probably be like. Hmm, I might steal that just for one night. It might happen, man. Um, well, hopefully he don't steal Dusty's drop kick. Did you see that shit? That oh was, man, he oh, nailed him on the noggin though. Oh man, that's a safe of sore eyes. Well, still better than most drop kicks you see now. You don't see too many people doing it. Best drop kicks in the business: Maven, Okada, Dusty Arco Rhodes, Holly. Randy Orton, Dusty Rhodes. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you know, Dusty, you know he's gonna get some color. So he got busted open. It's a cage match. You got to have some blood, baby. Exa- exactly. But we see JJ. Unless you're in WWE. You might see some soon. But all right, you see Please. JJ Dillon uh, no. hit Johnny Weaver with the chair. And then Luger runs to the ref. JJ tries to open up the, the cage door. He threw the chair in. As Luger's trying to pick up the <laughs> chair, Dusty hits him with the DDT onto the chair. 
One, two, three. Before. Dusty Rose, the new United States champion. And my career goes on, baby, <laughs> as the new NWA yeah. United States World Heavyweight Champion. He nailed the Weaver T. And then he won the match. Yeah, that was that was a memorable finish, wasn't yeah. it? Oh boy. All right, and your main <laughs> events. Oh boy. Ooh. The Nature Boy Ric Flair going against the World Heavyweight Champion Ronnie Garvin. And another steel cage match. Back to back. Ronnie, um, Ronnie Garvin was known as the Hands of Stone. And my God, he was <sighs> chopping the fuck out of Ric Flair. He got him in that corner. He chopped. He chopped. Ric Flair chopped him back. This motherfucker chopped him right in the face. Slapped him in the face. I'm sorry. I think my had, God. I think his, his chops was heavier than fucking Rick's. Rick backhand. Ronnie just went. Straight forward. Oof. Oh my goodness, man! And then I love the the Garvin stop that he did. Yeah, working I, the body I, parts. There's only I, one I, person that does that to this day. Randall. Randy Orton does and that. I'm so glad he still keeps that alive. I'm like, mm, bring that. Here's a, <laughs> they ain't nobody gonna do I, that. I think that's kind of silly move. But and especially considering the fact that Ric Flair didn't sell he it. He did not the, sell no, it. No, he didn't. <laughs> Till the final stop. Kind of like a five finger death punch, you know. Ha, cha, 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 cha. Uh. Ten seconds later. Uh. <laughs> you know. Um, See, just like earlier, you said Ric Flair didn't sell that low blow. <laughs> yeah, he, he didn't sell all his body parts, oh my God. all his limbs getting stomped we're, out. We're so. speaking out against Ric Flair as the greatest wow. of all time. Oh Shit. man, Flair gets busted open. You know that blonde hair is good for Was, for blood. Yes. So you know Cody's gonna be bleeding. You think so? Yes. Mm, I don't know. Maybe. Oh. I know the old man's not there anymore, but still, what happened? I'm a hole in my sock. <gasps> <laughs> but it was a good ass fight. It wasn't a match. It was a fight. Yeah. Uh, Ronnie Garvin tries to go for a crossbody. Flair catches him and hits him into the the cage, the metal part of the cage. And then one, two, three. Flair is your new world heavyweight champion for the fifth time. Five time. What a low number. Um, you know, I, I was looking because Ronnie Garvin has one of those bizarre NWA title reigns. So I try to Google it and get some more information, and it's like, who did he beat? No, he beat you know he beat Flair, yep. but it's kind of like why him, like why him? And the story goes is that they they just wanted to compete with the Survivor Series that year for pay per view. Hmm. They wanted Ric Flair to win the title. It's like okay, that makes sense. It's more exciting for a guy chasing and win the title than it is for him to walk in as champion, right? Yep. Um, so for all they needed was a transitional champion. And they couldn't find anyone to just take that title. It's like you're literally going to be a transitional champion for like 2 months. We need someone, anyone. And so Ric Flair was kind of like kind of maybe hand, helped hand pick his his opponent for that time, for mm-hmm. that matchup. So he's like, "You know, no one's ready. No everyone's in a program and no one's going to believe. It. I'll tell you what. This Ronnie Garvin guy, we can have great matches." We can have physical matches that people will talk about and appreciate and respect, and that's what happened. That's prior to um, making him making Sting, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. So, and just like we talked about during this match, rugged Ronnie Garvin making it a shoot, brother, yeah. against Ric Flair, and that's the kind of match that Ric Flair can pull out and uh, and uh, get the fans to appreciate. So that's what it was. And so that's why he was chosen as the transitional world champion. Ric Flair held this title. This is November of 1987. He held it to February 1989, and he lost that to Ricky Steamboat. Ooh. So you had a one, 1988, the year of the Nature Boy. Right? So that's when him and uh, Steamboat would do the, the trilogy. Yeah. And then after that, oh, boy. What? Terry Funk. Paul Bear. Uh, <laughs> and Ronnie Garvin. God damn it, Flair. Ended up in the WWFE. Yeah. He was yeah. in WrestleMania 5, I want to say. Garvin? Yeah. Really? Yeah. Rugged Ronnie Garvin. There I, he was. I don't remember 5 all, all too the, often. All the NWA legends. Harley Race, Ronnie Garvin. <laughs> 5 is such a Blair. A, a, a Blair. A Blair. <laughs> <laughs> the Mega a Powers. Blur in my, yeah, Explode. it was just a Mega, just the Mega Powers. That's the only thing I remember about that. Other than that, I might have to In go back. In former President Plaza. Ah. 
<laughs> that was the first one, right? For, for the second, second one? Second. 42? Second. We 40. 42. It doesn't matter podcast. Uh, Four. Chat town heat, Zabisco. And that's how I take the bump. <laughs> But guys, what do you guys think about Star K 1987 Shy Town Heat? It was a good pay per view. It was a great uh, show that you picked. Yeah. <laughs> it was a great show, but a couple bot well not botches, just a couple endings that just like ugh let a bad taste in my mouth. Because I just I like to see a decent finish. I don't like to see like the 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 time limit. Not too often. If if it's done correctly and cool, that one wasn't for me. The uh, Dr. Death one was ugh, atrocious. But we got my baby. You, we got that title back on the the real dream, the American dream. That's the one that I really care about. I think Martin Luther King's the real dream, but <laughs> sure. Love the team. Ow! No. No, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm legal. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, it was a great show. I enjoyed it. That's how we started Starcade. And we have one more Starcade show coming up uh-huh. in December. December is next week. And we're going to kick it off with ECW December to Dismember. We've been talking about this for a long time. And oh my God. Jesus. I'm finally going to watch it. Finally going to review it. My word. I hope I enjoy what I'm going to watch a lot. No doubt. No, ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> ain't no doubt about it. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> anyway. Anything yeah. else, fellas? <laughs> well. No, well, about what happened this weekend, the surprise of Rowdy Ronda. I was a shock. I was in tape. The, yeah, over at uh, Ring of Honor. Ring of Honor. Which, like, I think you, you told me, like, why would you do that? I think she said that she wanted to just, like, you know, pay her dues or just... She said that shit years ago in the WWE. Yeah, I, I think the last run left a really bad taste in her mouth, especially the way we were watching it. We we're like, oh, this is not the same Ronda from the begin- like the first run. It's just she was overproduced, and it just like seemed like WWE was like, you need to stay in here. You can't be something else. So I think she's just trying to like find her love again for for wrestling. And I think I'm gonna I'm gonna steal a quote from Bully. I hope it happens one day, but um, I guess. He was thinking, hey, Tony Khan says, hey, Ronda, you know, we had a great time with you at Ring of Honor. Here's an AEW contract. She comes out. She says, you know what, Tony? Appreciate your offer, but I'm all set. But I'd rather take a different kind of offer and let me go sign with Ring of Honor. Do that. Boom. You just made Ring of Honor a really important um, show. And you're going to get the the subscriptions and Ronda's going to get the love from the fans from doing that. So for Bully to say that, I was like, that is actually smart booking. Real smart booking. So you'll see her on Collision, then you see her in Ring of Honor. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the thing with that is, if you know these, this come is, back to me again, son. There's more like a surprise signing, like Ronda Rousey. Um, she's not signed. Okay. She's she's just still a free agent. She's just doing the indie circuit right now. All right. Well, so the reason why they would put her on Ring of Honor is because all right, you know Tony McCon books ahead. Yep. Although it doesn't seem like it, he has to change it on the fly due to injuries and various things of that nature, but. You know, he already has his women's championships lined up. He yeah. has his women's programs all set. Here's an opportunity. Hey, Okada's in town. Let me use him. Suzuki's in town. Let me use him. Mm-hmm. Osprey's in town. Let me use him. Ronda Rousey's in town. Where the hell can I put her? Well, Ring of Honor. Let's put her in Ring of Honor for a bit. And not only does this fill that purpose of, hey, we didn't have a spot for her. Now we do. And also, they have a pay-per-view coming up. Ring of Honor Final Battle exclusively on Honor Club, and let's pimp up those Honor Club subscription numbers, and let's put something special and unique on it, put Ronda Rousey on it. And it's not going to hurt any of the other programs. It's not going to hurt Julia Hart. It's not going to hurt Timeless Tony Storm. It's not going to hurt any of them. You know, so that's that's one. That's what I see when I see, you know, Ronda Rousey in Ring of Honor and AEW, you know, that's what I see when that happens. Yeah. You know. Dom? You stole your thunder. You ain't stole my thunder. <laughs> Tony's stealing the younger talents. Thunder. Oh my goodness. Tony who? Tony Khan. Oh. TK. I say Tony. He's trying strong. to do what's best for business, like John said. Yeah, you may be in the town right there. All right. 
<laughs> it is what it is. Hey. They, they're just loaded. They're loaded with talent right now. I feel bad for the the younger, ta- younger talent that's not being utilized. That's all. You know how I, I know. feel about that. Oh, make yourself known. Do Hell, something. Go to Impact. Right. Ronda. I think I think Don or she, TNA. She might she might just t- make an appearance out there too. But you know, no, none of Ronda's friends are there. I don't know where Jessamine Duke is, but Marina Shafir is in uh, AEW, yeah. so she's there. It and, only makes sense. You know, what's her name? Uh, Shayna Baszler is up in the the E, so she's done there. So that's mm-hmm. where she's gonna end up. Um, I think she's staying around, or she might just say, "Fuck it, I'm gonna go join the four horsewomen <laughs> of MMA." Shayna. Oh, Shayna. Well, I mean, the, Triple, since, H, Triple H likes her, but I know Triple H likes her, no but if I don't know, we'll see. Look up her contract. I'm not doing that. <laughs> okay. Fine, we'll find out in a future episode. We'll find out in 2024 wherever Shayna Baszler's uh, uh, allegiance lies. Yeah. All right, guys. It was a good ass show, but next week ECW December to dismember. <laughs> That's right. So, there it is. Next week, ECW, December to dismember. And, but for week 42, for Starcade 1987, Chi-Town Heat 4, AEW Full Gear 2023, it's the Notorious One Dom, it's Poppy Plano, it's Strapfax John Lee. We will see you next time. Boom!